Hi, Cal Johnson with Video 101 TV and welcome to part 2 of working with the title tool in Premiere Pro 2.0. In part 1 we covered the basics of the title tool. Now we'll take a closer look at some of its more in-depth features so that we can fully customize our titles. In the toolbar we've already worked with the select tool, the type tool, and the rotation tool. Beside the type tool is the vertical type tool. This allows you to type text vertically instead of horizontally. Next we have the area type tools. These allow you to constrain your text to a predefined area. Left hand mouse click on the horizontal area type tool to select it, then left hand mouse click in the title designer panel and hold the left hand mouse button down while dragging to create a box that will contain your text. Now just go ahead and type in whatever you want. Notice how the text stays within the box that you created. What's different about using the area type tools is that regardless of how much you resize the text, it will always stay within the bounding box you initially created. You can resize and reshape the box by using its bounding handles, however this only changes the amount of space for the text to be displayed. It doesn't increase or decrease the size of the text. If you resize the box so that there is not enough room to display all of the text, then a little plus symbol appears beside the box indicating that not all of the text can be seen. This is also true if you resize the text to the point where there is not enough room for all of it to be visible within the box. Just like text created with the type tool, you can change the style of text created with the area type tools by simply selecting the text in the designer panel and then selecting a new style. The vertical area type tool works just like the horizontal area type tool, but instead sets the text vertically. This is a good time to point out the paragraph alignment options. Regardless of whether text was created with the type tool or an area type tool, it can be aligned left, center, or right by first selecting the text in the designer panel and then clicking on the desired alignment. The last of the text tools are the path type tools. Select the horizontal path type tool and then left hand mouse click several times in the designer panel to create a path. Now type in your text. If you type more text than will fit on the path, you can resize the path by using the bounding handles. The bounding box handles work just like the area type tool, increasing or decreasing the display area, not the size of the text. The pen tool can be used to create a line. Select the pen tool by clicking on it, then left hand mouse click in the designer panel to create a path. A line is created using whatever style you currently have selected. The anchor point tools can be used to customize paths for both text created with path type tools and lines created with the pen tool. The add anchor point tool allows you to add anchor points to a path but only between the first and last anchor points. Clicking beyond the path simply moves the first or last anchor point to a new position. The delete anchor point tool is used to delete anchor points from a path. Using the Convert Anchor Point tool, you can left hand mouse click and drag holding the left hand mouse button down to convert a linear anchor point to continuous bezier. Release the left hand mouse button, then left hand mouse click on a handle to convert the anchor point to bezier. If you left hand mouse click again on the anchor point, it converts back to linear. Now if you don't know what I mean by linear, Bezier and Continuous Bezier, you need to check out the Motion Pass tutorial which will make all of those terms clear. In Part 1, we already saw how we could use the Transform and Properties options to customize our text. Let's use the Fill and Stroke options to take it one step further. Working with this title, the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the Strokes and the Shadow options so that we can concentrate on just the Fill. The first option under Fill is Type. This setting will affect what other fill options are available. With the fill type set to Solid, the options are very basic with just Color and Opacity. You can set the color by left hand mouse clicking on the Color box to open up the Color Picker dialog box, or you can use the Color Picker tool to pick a color from anywhere within Premiere's interface. Left hand mouse click on the drop down menu to select a different fill option. 
Linear Gradient allows you to create a two color gradient for your text. To change a gradient color, you can just double left hand mouse click on the color position marker or use the color picker tools just like you did with the solid color fill option. You can change the stop color opacity, angle, and repeat to create custom patterns. The radial gradient is also a two color gradient that radiates out in a circular pattern, perfect for that candy cane effect that you've been dying to use. The four color gradient uses four colors which can lend itself to a nice subtle effect. Bevel can be used to create text that looks almost three dimensional. At first, setting the fill to bevel will seem to do nothing. I'm going to change the highlight color to a really strong red just to help make the bevel really stand out for demonstration purposes. My shadow color is set to white. Nothing happens until I start increasing the size, then we begin to see the bevel effect. For a really pronounced effect, I can check the Lit Option checkbox and play around with the light angle and magnitude. Adding the Tube option makes the bevel effect very pronounced. I can finish up by adjusting the balance between the bevel highlight and shadow to make subtle or distinct changes to the overall effect. Switching the shadow color to black gives the bevel a completely different look. Eliminate will render only the strokes and their shadows. I'll turn on the strokes, then the shadow, so you can see what that looks like. The ghost setting simply takes out the fill. It looks like this dark color is the fill, but it's not. It's just the fill shadow, as you can see when I turn down the shadow opacity. Sheen adds a colored highlight across your text and can only be seen when the fill is visible, so it won't work with the ghost or eliminate fill types. Last, we have the texture option, which allows you to use a picture as the fill for your text. I won't go through all the options because they're pretty self-explanatory, pertaining mainly to scaling and positioning the picture within the text, but you can see how I'm using this picture of leaves to be the fill for this text. Under the stroke options, you can add inner and outer strokes to your text. Just click the add option to create as many inner or outer strokes as you want. All of the options are exactly the same as they are for fill, except for the types. Edge will add an edge around all of your text. Depth adds a hard edge stroke to one side of your text, almost like a drop shadow, and can be used to help create a 3D effect. Drop face almost seems the same as depth, but notice when I increase the magnitude, the stroke does not stay attached to the text. You can change the order of strokes or delete strokes by first selecting the stroke and then using the Title Properties Panel's Wing Menu. Use strokes sparingly when creating your text unless you're really going for a 60s or 70s psychedelic effect. Back in the toolbar we have the Shape Tools that allow us to create shapes to go along with our text. Click on the Rounded Rectangle tool and then in the Designer Panel, left hand mouse click and drag holding the left hand mouse button down to create a rounded rectangle. The shape will use whatever style you currently have selected. With the shape still selected, click on the new style and the shape immediately updates. You can use the fill and stroke options to create some nice custom shapes to go along with your text for things like lower thirds. Shapes and text can be positioned in the designer panel using the alignment and distribution tools in the toolbar. The alignment and center tools are probably what you'll use most often. Hold the shift key down to select multiple shapes and text. The distribute tools require that you have at least three items selected and I usually just position my titles by eye and then use the alignment and center tools when I need to. If you need to move one item in front of the other, for instance move some text in front of a shape, simply right hand mouse click on the text and select Arrange, then Bring Forward to bring it one step forward, or Bring to Front to make it the frontmost item. You'll notice that right hand mouse clicking brought up a number of options, most of which we've already covered, but there are a couple worth mentioning. Under View, there are the Safe Title Margin, and the Safe Action Margin options. These options turn on the Title and Action Safe Guides in the Designer panel. 
it's a good idea to use these guides and stay within the title safe area when creating your title. Text or shapes outside the title safe area may be cut off when viewed on some TV sets, especially the older CRT televisions. Word wrap is a feature that keeps text within the title safe area by creating a new line when needed. In the third and final tutorial on the title tool, we'll look at how to save our own styles, create custom templates, and create our own style libraries.